I bring uh, warm greetings from Nigeria. Uh, we are happy to be here to share part of our experience uh, in space development uh, in Africa and the role of the next generation, for which are uh, very prominent here. Uh, discussion will be little. We'll be talking about major economic challenges in Africa, the need for space technology development, space ferry nations in Africa, the Nigerian space program, a little bit, an overview, and there is uh, the role of the next generation of space sector leaders in Africa, and then the concluding remarks. Uh, we are happy that uh, Africa started well. The Africa's race to space is not a competitive battle or with nations for, for scientific superiority, but it's being used as an essential tool for social economic development. And we're happy uh, in 2002, uh, Mark made a historic trip. And uh, while he was there, interestingly enough, he spent his time on board conducting experiments on AIDS. Uh, over the over last few decades, there have been some activities in the use of applications of remote sensing in Africa. And particularly, this has been in the case of using uh, earth observation satellites, uh, creating maps, in the, providing geoinformation services, particularly in areas of agriculture, uh, estimating crop conditions, uh, creating land evaluation maps to advise uh, farmers on their fields and then have also ability to predict yield in some areas. And then uh, also on issues of environmental assessment and monitoring, uh, such as urban growth, uh, soil erosion, and desertification. It's a problem across. Uh, we, some of us are, are working, uh, particularly in these areas. Also the need for slum problems in Africa, to look at them, look at maps, and how we can restructure them the cities, uh, create in a better environment, and also be in a position to be distinctly identified so that they can also pay tax. And then all, also looking at other areas of renewable natural resources, uh, in water, flora, forest, and so on and so forth. And then disaster prediction management through flood warning uh, and relief and other services after such disasters. Uh, this we have also been doing effectively uh, through a number of international organizations. We are currently a member of the Disaster Monitoring Constellation that will provide some satellites along uh, uh, UK, Nigeria, uh, Algeria, China, and Turkey. And through that, we will provide, we meet 5% of our capacity available for disaster monitoring. And this we have been doing uh, all over Africa and the rest of the world. And then uh, also issues of health hazard monitoring, uh, pro predicting regions of mosquito hatching, and subsequently a risk of malaria infections. It's a big problem all over Africa. And I'm happy also through international collaboration, several countries are also working on this. And we also believe that our communication satellite is specifically designed you know, in these areas of mosquito, which is the number one problem in Africa. Uh, we, ask, we keep asking ourselves the need for space technology development in Africa. Uh, certainly, uh, because uh, lack of infrastructure all over Africa, a lot of us lose money buying, uh, you know, uh, buying, you know, uh, earth observation products and communication, hiring transponders from all over. And it's estimated that uh, in the year 2010, which is the past already, about $200 billion was available internationally for people who can link up to it. It means that uh, if we don't develop the infrastructure, it means that uh, we end up always having problems for capital flights. That's the kind of money we would have used for create, to create jobs in Africa, used for you know, health services, and the rest of them. And uh, also, bring, for you to have an idea of uh, internet countries in Africa, to look at uh, look at them and look at the kind of services that are available. 
uh, Nigeria spends over well over $550 uh, in a year, 450 of it had in bandwidth and $100 million for services uh, owing to inadequacy of facilities in the country. I'm sure it's even much more because we're not getting you know, correct statistics for those in the oil sector, and which spends a lot of money more. Uh, and also looking at the, the so-called space ferry nations uh, in Africa, uh, Algeria, Egypt, South Africa, and uh, Nigeria. Uh, giving you a little overview about the space program in uh, space program in Nigeria. This is our headquarters in, in Abuja, Abasanjo Space Center. Uh, our policy says that Nigeria shall vigorously pursue the attainment of space capabilities as an essential tool for socio-economic development and enhancement of the quality of life of our people. And government shall, through this, foster bilateral and international cooperation in all aspects of space and to ensure that Nigeria scientists and engineers benefit from global development in this enterprise. And then uh, we identify three models through which space development can be embarked on. And one of it is uh, technology is purchased but not transferred. Uh, you can order for, for, for satellites and you go there and pick it up in form of turnkey projects. Uh, and then uh, model two, indigenous development of space science and technology from beginning to the end. This implies that the country is interested in developing space science, engaging research and development. And then uh, these are some of the models which uh, United States of America, Russia, a uh, few others have gone through from research from the beginning to the end. And then we believe that model three, which is a hybrid of models one and two, which involves buying of satellite technology investments in research and development to attain proficiency in the technology. And then this allows know-how technology transfer and the country itself uh, joins the space ferry nation within a very short time. The cost of research and development is minimized and the country is involved uh, in the development of technology from beginning to the, end, to the end and have full control of program after commissioning. And this is essentially the program is sustainable an approach is currently being by countries like China, India, and Brazil. The Nigerian space program is developed based on this hybrid program. The Nigerian uh, satellite pro program, Nigerian Sat-1 Air Observation Satellite was launched in 26 September 2003, and through that we've been able to make a lot of impact in various sectors of the economy of Nigeria. Uh, following that, we also uh, launched Nigeria Communication Satellite on the 14th of May in 2007. Unfortunately, uh, it developed a problem and was deorbited after 18 months on November 11, 2008. Uh, NICOM Sat-1R is to be launched in December, uh, December in 2011. And uh, the Know-How Technology Transfer Group uh, 12, 12 Nigerian engineers and scientists were trained during the, sat so the SAT-1 project uh, with uh, Surrey Satellite Technology Limited of the UK. And then 45 Nigerian engineers and scientists were also trained to manage ground control and segment located in Abuja uh, during the Nigerian SAT-1 program, which we had a collaboration with uh, China Great Walls. And then uh, the, on uh, August 27th, about, about two months ago, we launched two satellites. Uh, the, it includes uh, Sat 2 and Sat X, and you can see that we are gender sensitive in our space program. And uh, in the Sat 2 program, uh, also with uh, Surrey Satellite Technology Limited, a total of five, 25 engineers were trained over a period of two and a half years, and Nigerian Sat 2 <coughs> training is broken into two segments of the academic training at the University of Surrey and led to the award of MSc degree, about 10 of the engineers, and then the rest are uh, hands-on tool. Uh, this is exactly what we did on that program. And the SAT X, which was uh, fully designed and built by Nigerian engineers and scientists, uh, both of them were launched August 17 in 2011. 
Uh, currently, we are embarking on uh, capacity building in various areas uh, for engineers and scientists. So, currently, we have about 39 of our colleagues uh, doing PhDs all over the world, uh, where they are it's, it's enumerated there. And then, about 45 of them also doing uh, MSc degrees in various uh, across the world 10 in Nigeria, uh, 20 engineers in the UK, 5 engineers in the US and 10 engineers in Russia. Uh, we also, in the, in the last few years, we developed a 25-year uh, roadmap, 25 year roadmap uh, which we call Roadmap to Nigerian Space Mission. We, we have been all along following the, the, the roadmap. We need uh, two satellites for 2011, which we have done. And then uh, we believe that in 2015, if we can also produce an astronaut, I hope if the global changes in policy, if we can still do that, but we'll see what we can do. And uh, we also believe uh, in 2025, uh, we should have been fully, our facilities should have been fully in place that we can deliver uh, the first indigenous satellite. And then a few years after, also have launch facility from our a launch vehicle uh, in 2030, and we believe shortly that uh, you know a commercial enterprise should have been fully formalized in Nigeria. Uh, the role of the next generation of space sector leaders in Africa: innovation and job creation, development of innovation in all aspects of space technology. Uh, we need to prioritization of resource allocation. Uh, human social economic development should always be the goal of space endeavor in Africa. Uh, we said it several our own is not a ego trip, but we believe it's a good opportunity for us to leapfrog in several fronts. And then, uh, uh, which means we must be very careful in our location of resources. And then, uh, we support the fight against poverty, almost create wealth for social stability and so on and the development of spin-offs and spin-ins from space activities. And then we focus more on economic growth and prosperity and we, within the limits of our, of our resources, invest in research and development, and then, most importantly, support collaborative research. In conclusion, humanity has benefited from space exploration in Soviet, and our technological and economic advancement today is tied to space technology development. Africa's race to space is not a competitive battle with nations for scientific superiority. It's been used as an essential tool for social economic development and for the improvement of the quality of, of lives from Africa. This has been underscored from a meeting from Mombasa, which will be doing the last four days, a uh, meeting of the leaders of Africa in space. And we said it emphatically that our shared vision is how we can improve the quality of life for our people. Nigeria has adopted space technology development model that supports know-how technology transfer, that has developed great capacity in space science and technology advancement in the country. The Space Agency in Nigeria therefore provides a platform for developing Nigerian scientists and engineers in space science and technology. We believe that a world without space exploration would be unbearable. Thank you very much. <laughs>